Hey, what's going on guys? Got another video for you today, and today it's going to be on this little receiver right here. It's the FSBS4 receiver, and today we're going to be talking about why it's one of the best budget options for your FSGT5 transmitter. Alright, so first thing I want to talk about is price point. This is going to be a little less expensive than your standard GT5 uh, receiver, which is going to be the FSBS6, which is a six channel receiver. That runs generally around $18 to $20, something in that range. This, on the other hand, you're going to be able to find for $12 to $14, depending on where you buy it, <clears throat> which I bought it on AliExpress, so it was $12. If you find it on Amazon, it might run somewhere around $14, but this is a four-channel receiver, so you're only going to get access to four of the channels on this transmitter, I'm pretty sure. Um, I've tried using some of these other slots, didn't work, but you're going to get ch access to one through four. So you're going to lose five and six up here on these knobs, but you will still have access to channel three, which is a press button, and channel four, which is a three position switch. Um, but I'm planning on putting on this vehicle right here, and this pretty much doesn't need anything. It's just the steering and the throttle, which is channels one and two. And then I just got a couple sets of lights, so any of these other channels will work for that channel three channel four or these other two slots will power lights even though they aren't technically channels that are controllable but they will still work for that so for any application where you only need four working channels or less you're going to be better off buying this cheaper fsbs4 all right so what comes with the bs4 is you get a bind plug you get a protective straw for your antenna, and you get a little piece of two-sided tape. So, how you use the bind plug, I'm going to show you right now. First off, you want to turn on your receiver and change the model number to whichever one you want to set. So, I have the first one set to my outcast. This is going to be number two, so I'm going to set to number two. Hit OK. And I'm going to turn off my transmitter. Then, I have to connect my receiver to power and usually what you do is you're going to go ahead and plug in your ESC into the second channel like you normally would but I don't have an ESC handy so I just have this four AA pack and I got it wired to a servo wire which will give me power so I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my channel two with the black negative wire always facing towards the edge of the receiver then you take your bind plug and you're going to plug it into the bind plug slot, which is going to be the third one down. And you're going to see right next to it, it's going to say, let me see if I can show you guys. Might be a little hard to see, but it says bind in orange right there. Right next to it, it says VCC. So once you got that done, you're going to take your transmitter, you're going to hold that bind button right there, and then turn it, actually first, you need to turn the power on to the receiver, as you can see, it's blinking fast. Now, I hold the bind button on the transmitter and turn it on. As you can see, now the receiver light has gone solid, so it should be bound. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off power to the receiver, turn off power to the transmitter and unplug the bind plug, it should all be bound together. All right, so now I've got to check to see if that bind was successful. So what I do now is I take that power source and I can literally move to any other channel. I just want to keep it out of one through four because those are the channels I'm going to be testing. So VCC would be the channel that you put power through on a nitro vehicle, but literally you can put it on any other channel. These top channels don't really do anything. So I'm going to just put it in one of those, turn on the power. Turn the power on to my transmitter right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a servo and I'll plug it into slot one. And that should be, let's see, that is my steering. So steering works. And right now it is off because I've turned it off. I was messing with this earlier. But what I can do is I can go down to SVC turn that on and now I will have gyro so now as you can see I'm not touching the uh, transmitter but the gyro works so when the gyro turns right the servo 
goes with it, turns left, server goes with it. So that's for your steering compensation. So it does have active vehicle control or whatever you want to call it. Um, Traxxas version is TSM. Uh, traction stability management or something like that. But you have full gyro. Just want to show you that. And then we're going to unplug from channel one. Go ahead and go to channel two. And obviously that's going to be your ESC channel, which is going to be throttle. So throttle shows you channel two is working exactly like it's supposed to be working. And then we're going to try out channel three. Plug that in. That's going to be this button right here. And that's going to be either full on or full off. So click the button. It's going to go full left. Click the button full right. So that's going to be for, let's say, the two-speed transmission. So you click it on. It's going to go to speed one, speed two. So different gears if you have a two-speed transmission. All right, now let's try out channel four. And there's channel four. And that's going to be this switch right here, which is going to be a three-position switch, which you can go full right, or center, or full left. That's going to be for if you want rear steer, I'm pretty sure that works for that. So you can have it centered, or if you want to turn right, click right. If you want to turn left, click left for your rear steer, or whatever else you want to use. So these two, plug that servo, these two top channels, I'm not sure what they're for. They're obviously for a different transmitter to be used with this receiver because they don't do anything for this transmitter. But yeah, the one top ones that say sensor, I believe, S-E-N-S, -E and servo, they don't really do anything. So those are also good for power. I'm going to show you that right now. If you want to plug in lights, you can go ahead and as long as you have power to the receiver. And we're going to plug that into power two as if that was an ESC. And you can literally use this light with any of those channels. So let's try... Let me try to show this. That. So we've got the sensor channel. We got light. We're going to try the servo channel. We got light. We're going to try the VCC channel. We got light. Channel 4, light. Channel 3, light. We'll unplug this. Plug it into the VCC channel. Plug it into channel two and yep we got light and channel one we got light so essentially any one of these channels you can use for light so if you need constant power you've got that but for the actual channels that work it's just going to be one through four all right so obviously one of the most important things about a receiver is range we're going to have to test that by actually putting it into the vehicle so we're going to go ahead and try to get this car torn down and get that receiver in it. All right, so we got it pulled apart and we got this old receiver right here. We got it actually Velcroed on, so I can actually just pop it right off. Let's see if this even fits in here so yeah it looks like on top of the servo is the only place it's going to fit and this little esc plate's kind of pinching it down in the front so all i have to do is put a little sticky tape on the back so i cut that little piece of double-sided tape in half just gonna put a little bit i've already cleaned both areas with um rubbing alcohol Sorry, it takes me a second to get this adhesive or the cover off of the adhesive. Now we're going to go ahead and stick that right about here. Peel that off. Now we're going to push in as far as possible and then stick it down. Hopefully it does not get in the way of the cage, which it might. But we're crossing our fingers hoping it doesn't. And then we're going to go ahead and put that switches. I'm going to go ahead and put a little hot glue on that antenna. 
right here so that it doesn't get in the way. So got the car all buttoned up here and uh, yeah, took it out for a little bit of run, which I will show you guys in a second here. And that was to test out the range and responsiveness. And the thing did great. Took it out to 240 yards to the point where I couldn't even see where the, what the vehicle was doing. So I actually had to set up my camera recording the vehicle. And what I had said in the video was I was going to run it in circles going forward to the right and then to the left. I messed up and I ran the vehicle going in circles to the right twice in a row. But then I decided to add going in reverse to the right and left with a smooth transition. And as you can see, it ran flawlessly, no cutouts. And this is with me not even be able to see the car because I'm so far away. So the range on this thing is going to be further than you ever need. So after testing out the range, I decided to keep running the vehicle, check out the responsiveness, and the responsiveness felt great on the ground. Uh, but the thing is, where you really test the responsiveness is in the air, but this isn't much of a jumping vehicle, so I couldn't test out how good the air control was, but <clears throat> I used my GT5 transmitter on my Outcast 6S with the original BS6 receiver. And with that combination, the responsiveness is absolutely amazing. I jump that thing all the time, do backflips, all that sort sort of stuff. So the mid-air uh, mid control is absolutely amazing on that combo. I'm assuming with the BS4 receiver, it's going to be the same. Um, I couldn't tell you for a fact because, like I said, I wasn't able to test it, but I'm assuming it's going to be the same. But on the ground, responsiveness is, is great. All right, so as you can see, got the car out here. I'm gonna test the range on the BS4 receiver. Uh, see all connected, got the SVC on. Um, got the range finder here. And I've actually ranged out that tree right there, right to the right of that building. And it is 240 yards out. So what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna leave the camera right here. leave the camera right here I'm gonna leave the car right here I'm gonna walk all the way out to that tree and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to test the steering by doing that and then I'm gonna hold it to the right and then hit the throttle for roughly about 10 seconds and then hit the steering to the left hold the throttle for 10 seconds make the car run around in circles you guys are gonna be able to see if it's cutting out or not I'm not that is way too far for me to be able to see so we're gonna test the range of the receiver see if it's better than my actual eyesight and in which case it goes further than you're ever going to need it to so i'm going to start heading out that way Hopefully that came out uh, and you guys could see what was going on, but obviously 
I can see uh, I can see the car at all. So if it was working, that means that the range is going to go out further than you're going to actually be able to see. So yeah, conclusions. Um, the BS4 seems to be an amazing receiver for the price. Uh, for 12 bucks, it's great, especially if you only need uh, steering and throttle, maybe one or two other channels, then the receiver is going to do absolutely fine. The range is insane. The responsiveness feels great. Unfortunately, I couldn't test it in the air, but besides that, for this vehicle, it's more than I need. Definitely didn't want to pay 18 to $25 for the BS6 receiver, which is selling for about $25 on Amazon. So just wouldn't have been worth it to put a $25 receiver in this vehicle. So for a budget receiver, it works absolutely great. Has the range, has the two channels I need, has a bunch of extra slots for power if I need lights, fans, all that stuff. Um, but definitely not going to need rear steer or the two speed transmission on this thing. So not too worried about it for the price. It's exactly what I needed. And I think it's a great receiver. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post down below. And thanks for watching.